everybody uh this is episode 107 of now showing with mike and wayne that's 107 episodes of of us talking movies um this week uh, i know a couple months ago we already we did buddy movies but we have a a buddy movie we're going to review this week so we're going to do buddy movies part two um some that we have maybe we mentioned but i know we didn't fully talk about uh mine are all kind of uh more goofy this time around which May hinted one of Wayne's choices as well. Um, So, you know, buddy movies, there's so many out there. There's so many options. There's cop films. There's there's, uh, bro comedies. There's family films. There's just so many, such a genre of films within the buddy movie uh, area. Um, So my first one is going to be like a best friend one, and that is the movie Ted uh, from 2012. (laughs) Uh, people I'm sure are familiar with this one. Seth MacFarlane uh, wrote and directed along with, he wrote it along with Alex Sulkin and uh, Wellesley Wild. Um, original story by him starring Mark Wahlberg, Mila Kunis, Seth MacFarlane as Ted, the bear, Joel McHale, Giovanni Ribisi, uh, Patrick Warburton, Alex Borstein. Everyone makes an appearance from family guy, I think, except for Seth Green. Um, but he's one of the busier ones of the group. So that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So we have um, a story. Uh, it it's kind of starts out like a magical Christmas story. The kid gets a bear uh, for Christmas, um, and he loves it so much that he makes a wish that the bear was real. And the very next morning, the bear walks down in the st- in the uh, kitchen, and uh, John's parents, that's Mark Wahlberg, freak out. Alex Borstein and, and the other and the guy, uh, they freak out because they're like, oh, my God, it's Satan. Uh, real mm-hmm. funny scene to kind of open the movie. And then we get Ted as, you know, he's not kept secret. He's out in the world. So he's like Ted is a celebrity. He's like any other celebrity that would go around doing talk shows and stuff. They give us a montage of all that. Cut to uh, years later, Mark Wahlberg's a grown man. Uh, in a relationship with Mila Kunis's character, but the one thing that gets in the way is his best friend Ted the Bear, who they sit around and they watch uh, sitcoms and Flash Gordon and smoke weed all day. Essentially, um, real funny movie, very good buddy movie. It, you know, it shows the the best friend relationship, I think, to its fullest. Obviously, there's there's things that have to be learned throughout. Great cameos from Flash Gordon himself, uh, who just comes to their party one day and just gets all coked out and stuff. It's really a really funny movie. It was one of those ones, Wayne, when I saw, I couldn't stop laughing. Uh, the belly laughs were, were a plenty throughout this film. Um, just watching these, you know, Mark Wahlberg play next to Teddy bear, Seth MacFarlane, I think was just hilarious, a hilarious idea to start with. And then to make him like a real person, I mean, there's like in both these movies, there's sex scenes, there's him doing drugs. So, I mean, there's like, he's a real, live being just stuck inside a teddy bear so it's it's a very fun uh two movies i think um i believe they're doing a tv show or a cartoon or something there is another adaptation of this coming from seth MacFarlane. um so i'm looking forward to that as well but this way wayne when you saw this movie what was your first reaction i just you know didn't expect much because i was kind of over getting like just i was done with the family guy at this point just you know I don't know, too much. It's the Simpsons effect, basically. It's great for a time, and that's just like, all right, time to move on with my life. So I didn't really have a whole bunch of expectations going in, but yeah, just hilarious. I think uh, one of the ones that sticks, the scene that sticks out the most for me is when they're, uh, he's got the uh, the prostitutes or the strippers over. Yeah. And so on Jan Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Wahlberg and Mila, Mila Kunis are like, is that a shit? Is that a shit on my floor? Is that a shit? <laughs> That reaction, her reaction is priceless because it's very real. I don't know like how method she got with it. If if someone actually shit on her floor to get into it, but like her reaction to that scene was very real. And I think um, her and her and Wahlberg played it off very perfectly. Uh, It was just, that's a fun, funny scene. The um, one of my favorite ones that I go back to is the uh, nineties band where he's pretending to sing like a nineties singer. 
And he's like, just, you know, just want to say a lot of vowels. And he does like his impression basically of like Eddie Vedder or Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> and it's like, like, it's perfect. Like it, it sounds just like it. Um, and then of course the, uh, I can't remember if it was the first or second one, but the, the names, the two names, um, where he, is it, is it one of those, but, but with a Lynn at the end of it? And he's like, Tammy Lynn. But, uh, yes. Yeah. Going really. back, we're going through the white trash names. That's what it was. The white trash. And names. Then, uh, the, obviously the, the porn on the computer scene. There's so much porn. On. <laughs> There's so much. Yeah. That's made. That's a TikTok. So well organized. <laughs> so well organized. Rim job. Clock, clock wise, wise way. Rim job. Oh my God. Sometimes you like seeing a tongue go the other way. <laughs> it's yeah. And it's it just even. The jokes to uh, it's a simple joke in the second one when the um, Amanda Seyfried's character is called Sam L. Jackson. Yes, she doesn't get the joke. <laughs> like, <laughs> have you seen a movie ever? <laughs> <laughs> it's <a> black guy. <laughs> oh God, it's so good. Um, yeah. So yeah, these two films, I obviously you can tell I, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, I didn't get to watch them this week. I started watching Ted, but I just haven't had time to finish it. Um, yeah. our, Wayne, what's your uh, first one of the week? As we're talking about buddy movies, I wanted to do a subgenre with the family aspect. So the first one is a mother-son team-up. 1992's Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Uh, directed by Roger Spottiswood. Uh, writers Blake Snyder, William Osborne, and Will Davies. Starring... Sylvester Stallone, Estelle Getty, Joe Beth Williams, Roger Reese, Mark Ferrero, John Wesley. Uh, oh, Ving Rhames is, makes, makes an appearance. Uh, it's pretty much all the recognizable names that I recognize. So, um, so this movie, obviously, I'm a huge Rocky fan, but I'm also a huge Golden Girls fan, so... The best of both worlds. <laughs> uh, it's campy. It's did it, it did, did not age well, obviously. Um, but just the jokes are good. The uh, the the mother son thing. Um, it's there, but just so quirky. Like you know, it's believable, but not to a regular extent. If that makes sense at all, it's just mm-hmm. like you know Sylvester Stallone with just like the facial expressions being lectured by mom. It's like all right. And obviously, you, you get the uh, stop or my mother will shoot. It's like, oh, there it is. Oh, okay, that's why this movie's called this. Yay! It is a quintessential, I think, 90s film. It's very 90s. Um, I'm looking up that, looking at it right now. Uh, it, you know, I have memories of this movie, Wayne. They're not normally fond, but, you know, I and I think. There are movies like this from that time period that also that I liked that were also very well hated. Um, but just for some reason, because I watched it 17 times or, I, you know, it just it was on all the time. This one was one that was on HBO all the time. Yeah. And, and I just want to point out, I, my choices are not good movies by any stretch this week. It's just... You know, you get the quote. No, and that's and that's fine. And uh, there's one for in my list definitely that I know people didn't like, um, but I I enjoyed. Uh, it, what I my favorite fact about this one is that Stallone got tricked into starring in it, uh, because back in the in the 80s and 90s, Schwarzenegger and Stallone had this bit of like rivalry because they were like the same type of star, and uh, Schwarzenegger put it out there on purpose that he wanted to star in this movie. So Stallone was like, "Oh shit! Well, if Arnold wants to star in this movie, then there must there must be something to it. So I better star in this movie." And then Arnold went completely and did something completely different and better than this movie. And Stallone's like, "Well, oh, that's the one time I got tricked in my in my, in my career." So, um, just a, a little tidbit uh, fact there about this film. Uh, let's see, box office wise, only brought in twenty eight million or seventy million worldwide. So that's not terrible, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely uh, some. Yeah, we don't talk about the golden raspberries, but uh, in pop culture, like one of my favorite quotes, they you know they do the dirty hairy thing where she like points the gun at and like, go ahead, make your bed. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like so cheesy. Like come on, 
Apparently, it's mentioned in Mortal Kombat 11 in a pre-match. John Rambo, voiced by Stallone, and Cassie Cage. Cassie references the film's title, so I'm sure it's not very, uh, very, very nice mentioned. Also, one of my favorite SNL skits: Sylvester Stallone, Norm Macdonald. Norm Macdonald's character is dying on the side of the road, and Sylvester Stallone is the passerby who sees him and goes yeah. to comfort him as himself. He's playing Sylvester Stallone. And Norm MacDonald, as he's running out of breath, keeps dissing his movies. And one of them is, don't stop me, I'll shoot him. What do, you, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? He said, don't stop me, I will shoot. Stop. And Stallone, like, freaks out on everybody. <laughs> and he's, like, punching him as he's, like, unconscious. It's, <laughs> it's such a good skin. It was really funny. I recommend people seeking that one out. Um so yeah, that's a that's a, an interesting one to bring up, Wayne. I, I'm glad you talked about that one because I feel like, again, there are a lot of movies that I can mention from the '90s that I watched fondly that I can rightfully admit were terrible, but I still watched them. So, <laughs> yeah. um, well, I, right. I, just, I couldn't remember what we talked about before. Like I, oh yeah, I no, I it's yeah. the episode, but well, I don't even remember which episode it is. We've done <laughs> so many you know, scenarios in our career. Yeah, I had to, I had to go find it myself too. Um, all right, so the next one uh, is a guy we've directed by a guy we've talked about, not always finally, but sometimes, uh, Todd Phillips. In 2004, he directed the remake of Starsky and Hutch, starring uh, Owen Wilson, Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn, Juliette Lewis, uh, Snoop Dogg, and a uh, great cameo by the uh, always funny Will Ferrell. Um, Starsky and Hutch, a uh, much maligned by the fans of the TV show because it is a comedy and the TV show was not a comedy. So uh, right away, you're already pissing off the baby boomers who grew up on this show. Um, but for yeah. us, Wayne, I mean, I, I thought it was hilarious. It's a buddy. Cop movie. movie. It's there. I mean, Stiller and Wilson have played in so many movies together. They, it's like they're, you know, they're, it's so easy for them to play off of each other. Throw in Snoop Dogg as Huggy Bear. Hilarious. Will Ferrell in the prison scene where, He's the guy they're trying to get answers of, and he makes him do the dragon. Like, I need a dragon. And just just the, the stuff that they do in this movie is hilarious. Go ahead. I mean, that's you. another one where we, that's a quote we would do all the time at work. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need two dragons. <laughs> I was going to need two dragons. Um, the Easy Rider uh, uh, yeah. spoof that they do, too, where they're riding the motorcycles and they have the fake mustaches and, and long hair and stuff. I really love that part because I love Easy Rider. Uh, yeah. Just it's just fun. And then they brought the original actors in at the end to give them the actual car, which I thought was a really cool yes. uh, twist on it. Um, I saw this when I saw this in the theaters back in 2004, I think it came out in 2004. Yeah. Right around that, uh, with my aunt, who was a huge Starsky and Hutch fan. And she was so pissed throughout the whole movie. He's like, they wouldn't do that. Starsky would never do drugs. Yeah. And he didn't know when you do the drugs. And we're sitting here trying to have an argument as the movie's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I loved it. I just, you know, ah, you really know golf. I know even more about grass. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, of course, do it. Roman Cola, do it. Do it. Roman Cola, do it. What are you so, doing? Yeah, what are you so doing? many good scenes. Vince Vaughn as the villain is fantastic. Uh, I believe Jason Bateman, too, also makes an appearance in this as well. Um, yeah, he's like the numbers guy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's really funny in it, too. Just a really fun movie. Um, I you know, people don't talk about it enough. I know, like critically, it wasn't hated or anything, but it wasn't either. It wasn't super well loved, like something like Old School or or one of those big comedies uh, from back in back at that time. Um, but it is a fun one. It's really good. I do recommend people watching it if they haven't seen it. All right, Wayne. What's your what is your next one? All right, I'm going for something that was really corny and not like something that's really corny, but absolutely loved by most people that remember. 1995's A Goofy Movie. We're going father and son this time. Now, when you hear Goofy is getting a spinoff standalone movie where he's the star, you know, I'm like, I remember being my 12, 13 year olds. I was like, really? You know, it was, was now, was Mickey busy? Was Donald busy? <laughs> but then I saw this masterpiece uh directed by kevin lima writers were are jim <clears throat> jim megan chris matheson brian pimental starring the voices of bill farmer jason marsden jim cummings bill farmer being goofy jason marsden being max 
Uh, Jim Cummings is the voice of Pete the Cat. Uh, Kelly Martin as Roxanne, the object of many people's affections. And it was a cartoon dog, but I've heard more than one person say that they really, really enjoyed um, and felt things for uh, Roxanne. <clears throat> ah, Rob Paulson, we talked last week. Uh, big voice on the Ninja Turtles was uh, PJ, Pete Jr., uh, Sean Wallace, Sean Principal Mazer. Uh, you'll know, remember him from uh, Inconceivable from Princess Bride. Uh, that's about it for voice actors that I recognize. Oh wait, I take that back. Uh, Joey Lawrence of Blossom fame was a voice by somebody called Chad. Obviously, um, Polly Shore was the buddy. It's the Leaning Tower of Chizza. Buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically Goofy feels like he's not connecting with his son Max anymore, so he decides to take him on a summer road trip across the country to go fishing and work on the perfect cast. Yeah. Max devises a plan and tells a lie to go to the Powerline concert and get on stage because he knows them. They're friends. And so he inadvertently tells Goofy the wrong way to go, and they end up in like Los Angeles or something. And obviously craziness ensues along the way, and uh, it ends with the climactic running around from security and trying to find each other at the Powerline concert behind the stage. Uh, Goofy ends up on stage and has to do the perfect cast to go along with the Powerline dance. And... Uh, if you're fans of social media, you'll see that there are there are pages devoted to Powerline and doing the dance, dressing up in full anime costume or whatever the correct terminology is called. Forgive me, I'm not that hip with it, but yeah. And they just do the whole, we, we listen to each other's heart. And da 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 So, and of course, Max ends up on stage and everything is hunky-dory. And it's just one of my just... Things from childhood that I still enjoy to this day, much like Turtles that we talked last week. Um, just good stuff. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I I um, I like this movie, but I never became like a diehard of this film. I remember liking it when I saw it, but I probably only saw it a handful of times. I know a lot of my friends watch this thing religiously still to this day. Uh, a lot of my friends are, you know, it's, I see the TikToks and the tweets and all the stuff mentioning this, this movie. So it really kind of made itself part of our uh, culture back in the nineties. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it's for a kid's film, it's definitely well-written. It's well, it's well-voiced. It, yeah, everything plays out really well. Well, you're going over the story too. I was thinking like, Oh, so it's basically like, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, but with just a single dad instead of a, a family. Uh, basically. So that's basically the story. That's the premise. That's the story. So when you, it, wor it works. Uh, it's a fun movie, I think. People, if you haven't shown this to your kids yet, uh, you should probably. I know I haven't shown it to mine, but he's very particular about his movies. So, um, And like I said, it wasn't like it was one of my favorites or anything growing up. So, um, But yeah, it's definitely... Uh, Something like out of the like kiddie films like that that you could recommend for sure for anybody to watch. All right, so my next one, I've actually decided I've got a fourth one too, but I'm going to start with my next one, and that is um, another TV adaptation turned film, and it's one that was very much hated by a lot of people. Uh, written by Dak Shepard, directed by Dak Shepard, starring Dak Shepard. It is the Chips movie. Uh, starring Dak Shepard, Michael Pena, Rosa Salazar, Adam Brody, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. Also, uh, um, Kristen Bell uh, is in it. Musical uh, score, also by Dak Shepard. Yeah. <laughs> Dak Shepard, holding a magnet. Shot by him. He was actually holding a camera while he was performing and directing. Um, yeah. Richard T. Jones is in it. Uh, Justin Chatwin. Uh, Ed Begley Jr. It's got a pretty big cast. Ben Falcone, um, uh, Josh Duhamel is uncredited. Maya Rudolph is uncredited. Uh, Eric Estrada plays a paramedic in it. Um, he's obviously the original uh, Ponce, uh, or Ponch, sorry, Ponch, um, that Michael Pena plays. So Michael Pena is Ponch, and uh, Shepard is Jonathan John Baker. So the story is you have 
a, a former Supercross rider played by Dak Shepard. Just I think he wrote that in there because one, it's about motorcycles, and two, he likes motorcycles. Um, he <clears throat> then becomes a, a bike, a motorcycle cop, and he is like put on like probation because he's he's got a lot of fuck ups. But what he's really good at is driving the motorcycle, so they keep giving him chances, and. He then is teamed up with a new partner who we find out who already we know from the beginning is an undercover um, FBI agent pretending to be part of this, the high, the chips highway patrol. Cause that's what it stands for. California highway something patrol. Um, and so that's, he goes undercover as punch and he, uh, they become partners. And of course there's that, you know, the turmoil like in Starsky and Hutch where they hate each other at first, but then they end up becoming really good friends. Uh, I, you know, this was a, a blind buy for me, Wayne. I was at uh, Target when I was living in Illinois, and it was 10 bucks around the holidays on Blu-ray. So I was like, ah, you know what? I've been wanting to watch this. I'll, I'll get it. And I really liked it. I thought it was really funny. Um, the Shepard and, and uh, Pena are really good together in it. It's, it's one of those movies, I'll tell you, sure. Is it a good movie? Probably not. But it's an entertaining film. Uh, and I really like the buddy movie uh, banter that they have going back and forth with each other. And it's just, it's a really fun movie. And it's fun to see Kristen Bell, his, his Dex's real life wife, play his wife in this movie, but she's a total bitch um, mm-hmm. and like cheating on him constantly. So it's it's a really, it's really kind of fun to see her have that kind of fun with that role. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good movie. Vincent D'Onofrio plays the villain. Uh, so he's always fun, uh, especially because in a role like this, even as bad as any movie is, Vincent D'Onofrio is one of those actors who's always going to bring it. So it doesn't matter if the if it's good or bad. He will always be who he is. And it helps this movie, I think, for sure, that he is very believable as the villain. Um, a really fun movie. Wayne, have you seen this one or no? If I have, I've only seen it once, and I okay. didn't really care about it one way or the other. Oh. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't something that sure. stuck with me either, so... Yeah, it's one of those ones. It's it's become one of those ones I'll put on every now and then uh, when I when I'm going to bed or whatever. Just you know, something to have on the background. Um, all right, uh, Wayne, what is your third one? And then I have a bonus one I want to mention. All right, to continue with the cheese factor and the fact that it's finally getting a sequel, we're going to talk close mine out with uh, 1993's Hocus Pocus. Now, um, people love this movie. They uh, you know, our, it's got a, a huge cult following. And of yep. course, Halloween is right around the corner. Of course, we wouldn't know about it because even at Halloween and down here in Florida, it's still 90 freaking degrees. It is, yes. But anyway, I digress. So, uh, directed by Kenny Ortega. Writers are David Krishner, Mick Garris, and Neil Cuthbert on the screenplay. Starring Bette Midler. Sarah Jessica Parker, Kathy Najimi, Najimi. I always forget right how to now. pronounce her name. Uh, though they are the three witches, Winifred, Sarah, and Mary. Uh, Omri Katz plays Max. Thora Birch plays his little sister, Danny. Uh, Vanessa Shaw plays Allison, uh, the love interest, I believe. Yep. Let's see. And then the guy from NCIS that I can't, Sean McMurray, plays the cat whose name I can't remember. Um, Zachary Banks. No. Yeah. Is yes. it Banks? Yeah, I think it's Banks. Yeah. Zach, he plays the actual Zachary Banks character who gets reincarnated or cursed as a cat to yeah. live forever. Um, yeah. So obviously this takes place. In I believe Salem, Massachusetts, yes, you know, with the yep. and everything, and uh, the what's the name? Hold on, give me one second here. The Sanderson sisters are uh, executed for practicing dark dark witchcraft. Three hundred years later, they are brought back to life when the spell is broken, and they are hunting the delicious, delicious children of the town. Oh, a kids movie from the '90s where you could have your main your main bad guys murdered in the opening scene and and then come back for vengeance for the rest of the movie, and it's supposed to be like, "Hey, happy kids film." <laughs> Absolutely, it was a different time back then. It was for sure, yeah. yeah. But yes, just you know, just you know, a lot of you know '90s 
very 90s you know costumes and yep. dancing and ob- oblivious parents that have no freaking idea what's going on and you know you got sarah, sarah jessica parker you know bouncing around ariana run she's a very highly sexualized witch yes gary marshall has a small cameo i believe where he's dressed up as a devil or oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Marshall. Maybe I'm completely wrong here, but I don't remember exactly. I know Doug Jones, the Guillermo del Toro um, guy who does like Abe Sapien and uh, the the creature in uh, Shadow um, Shape of Water. Uh, he was Billy, whatever the the corpse. He was yes, the, corpse. the mouth. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Not Sean McMurray, just Sean Murray. Oh, okay. Apologies on that one. But yeah, it's it's one of those movies. It's another one like Goofy movie where, like, I liked this movie as a kid. But I'll be honest, I have not watched it religiously like a lot of other people do every Halloween. Um, I started at a certain age. I started gravitating towards the more adults, you know, Halloween and, and Friday the thirteenth and stuff like that. Um, and I, I left a lot of this kind of stuff behind, not because I didn't like it. Still, I just. I don't know. It just never, it just was one of those things I saw. I swear to God, I probably saw this movie like 30 times as a kid, yep. but I just don't, you know, I probably haven't watched it in 30 some years, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Or, or Every Halloween we years. watched it and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It was Gary Marshall and uh, his, his sister, Penny Marshall plays his wife <laughs> and chasing the witches out of the house. Cause it's fucking weird. <laughs> it's just weird, but it was, you recognize it's like, hey, hey. yeah. So, uh, I recently watched this uh, a couple of years ago because we had a Cub Scout outing right before Halloween, and we all we rented out a theater and we watched. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I get it, but I don't love this the way I used to. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. but again, we probably just over. team up for our buddy comedy topics. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. obviously, uh, they are making a sequel finally. Uh, I made it. It's yeah, coming out uh, this fall, September, I think. Well, it is. So. I thought it was next year for on the third. No, oh, it's year. yeah, it's like September. Good um, for them. Good for them. Yeah, good for them. It's on Disney Plus. Um, so yeah, no, that will be. I'm sure we'll we'll either review it or we'll at least talk about it. Um, all right, wait, one, wait, more. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. one more before we get into our next segment. I just wanted to mention Wayne Shanghai Noon with uh, Jackie Chan and. Uh, Owen Wilson and Lucy Liu, directed by Tom Day. Um, what did I just watch that he directed? I just watched something that Tom Day directed. Oh, he did a new movie, a movie on what Netflix called Wedding Season. Interesting. So that's interesting that he he was the same. I didn't even realize. Um, but Shanghai Noon, I've always been a fan of that one. Similar to like Rush Hour, it's 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 very Jack- similar to Rush Hour. Yeah, like- oh, it is, it is. Um, but it's obviously it's Owen Wilson instead of Chris Tucker. But it's that kind of uh, Starsky and Hutch and like Chips type of buddy comedy. And I think it works really well. I think I, I was always a, more of a fan of this one than I was of Rush Hour. Like I like Rush Hour probably more, but I like Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights more than I like the rest of the Rush Hour movies. Um, it Yeah, I don't know. I've just always liked this movie. I, I, I won't talk much about it, but it was just always really fun to me. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, but yeah, it was just a good one. It's a good to watch Jackie Chan do all his crazy shit that he does. Uh, and Owen Wilson was, is really funny. So I, I definitely it recommend doesn't it. have the, the one liners that, uh, Rush Hour has. No. And that's something that's, yeah, definitely more up Chris Tucker's, uh, alley. Well, but I, I think that's the only real reason people remember, would remember Rush Hour over this more, one. Yeah. They're, both good, they're both very good franchises. Yeah. I get you. Um, all right, some uh, honorable mentions are just ones that we didn't talk about. 21 Jump Street, 48 Hours, The Other Guys, which we've mentioned many of times, but uh, such a great movie. Peanut Butter Falcon, uh, Vacation French, Palm Springs, which we both reviewed on this podcast, uh, The Highwaymen, Central Intelligence, um, The Do-Over, Paul, Hot Fuzz, Armed and Dangerous, which I've talked about, Romy Michelle's High School Reunion, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, Dude, Where's My Car, Beavis and Butthead Do America, Sideways, American Ultra, Harold and Kumar uh, go to White Castle, uh, Men in Black, Dumb and Dumber, Black Sheep. We talked Tommy Boy last time, so Black Sheep should get a mention here. Uh, mm-hmm. Step Brothers, uh, Rush Hour, which we just talked about, Midnight Run, which I love and I've talked about several times. And um, I think I have 48 hours on here twice. I do. 
So 48 hours again. Um, another 48 hours. Another 48 hours, the sequel. Uh, all right, so we're going to get on to our review. Of the week. All right, and this week, uh, to stay with our theme, we have the brand new movie starring Jamie Foxx, Dave Franco, Snoop Dogg, um, called Day Shift. It's directed by J.J. Perry, written by Tyler Tice uh, and Shay uh, Hatton, uh, produced by Ty- or story by Tyler Tice, um, Jamie Foxx, Dave Franco, I already said them, uh, Megan Good, uh, Carla Souza, Steve Howie, Scott Adkins, uh, Natasha Leo Biordizzo, I think. That's how you say that? I don't know. Or Bordizzo, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that name. All right, so this is a movie about vampires. And Jamie Foxx plays a vampire hunter. In this world, vampire hunting, it's still quiet, but there's like an organization. And he's been kicked out of the organization, so he's like a freelance vampire hunter. Uh, he kills vampires, turns their fangs in for money to um, the uh, pawn shop guy, p- owner played by the great uh, Peter Stormare, and uh, in his brief appearance. Russian components, American components, all made in Taiwan. This is how we fix things on a Russian space station. That's from the, the movie Armageddon, everybody, if you can't tell. Sorry, it's one of my favorite cameo roles of his. I was like, ah, yeah. I love it so much. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, he's really good at that kind of stuff. So I just want to chime in right here. I did not have any expectations for this movie. And God damn, if I didn't love the shit out of all <laughs> one hour and 53 minutes of it, I cannot wait to watch this movie again just because it was that good for me. Yes, it's it's a lot of fun. It was um, like John Wick meets fucking Blade meets just good. Oh, good. Yeah, it's it's a good movie. It's very entertaining. Um, I also it, more entertaining when when I found out that a lot of the vampire effects were actually done with um, uh, people that can shift their body into those positions. They hired like twelve of them. Yeah. Um, what are they called? Contortionist. Contortionist. Yes, I was reading an article or watching a, I watched a video of them doing all that. Like, because I thought most of it was CGI, but the fact that they did most of that and then they just kind of sped it up a little bit, such a cool like idea to like, hey, let's have our vampires do like because they just so people know the vampires can contort into just weird positions, which makes it easier for them to get out of like chokeholds and stuff and kick kick our our heroes and stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it was really, when I saw that too, I was like, wow, that's really cool that they did that. I, I'll, we'll give you a bit of a plot synopsis here. We're not going to spoil anything, but so as he said, he's, he's hunting vampires. He's on his own. Um, he then, he kills a vampire in the beginning, a couple vampires. It turns out that he killed the wrong vampire and the head vampire wants him dead. And so he finally, before he knows that he gets back into the union cause he needs money quickly to stop his, his wife and daughter from moving across country. Um, Snoop Dogg gets him back in. That's his buddy, and then they kind of then it becomes the buddy comedy that we're that we're talking about today. It's him and Dave Franco team up, um, and they basically go and and un- unravel this story of uh, what is happening and why they want him dead. And it's just really it's really good. It's really funny. It's very entertaining. Dave Franco is hilarious um, as Seth, uh, the sidekick. I don't want to spoil what happens later, but it's really, it, I mean, it just like, there are so many things that would have happened in other movies when the thing that happens, that happens to him, but the way they did it was so creative and so cool. And like, I, I like how, I really like how they did it. Lots of surprises, lots of oh shit moments. Oh, and the, some of the Snoop Dogg scenes are amazing. So there, yeah. there's some really good stuff with him. There's some great, you know, you know, Snoop when he did when he did this movie, he's like, "All right, but I got to say this, and I get to say this," and they're like, "All right, dude, whatever." It's funny because you know Snoop did a really good acting job, he but did. it's still Snoop. He's still Snoop. He's still yeah. yeah. It's not it's not um too far from who he is, and yeah. he still brings up when he when he says West Coast forever, motherfuckers like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's you know totally him. I love that's why I love L.A. <laughs> I got it. We got to talk about the throwback too. We will. We will. There is a line uh, where he utters and he goes, that's why I love LA, all LA, all the goddamn vampires, obviously mentioning one of our favorite, uh, paying tribute to one of our favorite vampire films in, uh, as the lost boys, 
uh, when they say that's one thing I hate about uh, Santa Carla is all the goddamn vampires. So a great reference, a great callback to a great film. Um, and it was, when that happened, I was like, oh my God, I love this movie. So like, it was just, they were, they were having fun. It wasn't yeah. meant to be serious. It was meant to be a fun movie. Um, it was number one on Netflix when it came out. I could definitely see there being a sequel. I think it was intended to have one. Um, so we'll see what that looks like uh, in the future if they do green light one. Did he? Okay, now forgive me. Was Jamie Foxx in Project Power last year when we watched it? Or two years ago now, right? Is I think him? it was. Yeah, it was either 2020 or 2021. It I think was, it was I think 2020 it was, because I was, yeah, in the process yeah. of moving to my new place. So Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it was two years ago. Jamie yeah, Foxx has been killing it um, in the Netflix movies. Yeah, know, the last two years. So. Yeah, two good, two good, two good movies um, from him, and I just, you know, I like you. If you like Jamie Fox, I think you'll like this movie too because he, he he plays it very fun, very kind of freewheeling. Um, yep. It's it's yeah, it's a really good movie. If people were skeptical of it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. I think it's just one of those ones that's just really, really enjoyable. And it really, I didn't expect it to have that buddy element that it had, um, but it was really funny. And like I said, the rest of the cast was really cool and really good. And I just, it's I, a high recommendation for me. I would say eight out of 10. Wayne could probably even go higher on repeat viewings. Um, but yeah, it's just really entertaining. What's your I'm final? Right eight and a half for yeah. sure. Yes. All right, so let's go to anything that you have watched this week, Wayne, that you want to talk about real quick. Nope, I'm still making my way through Smallville and King of the Hill. Just, you know, trekking through when I have time. Uh, I watched uh, uh, the episodes of Hard Knocks on HBO about the uh, Detroit Lions. Okay. And, uh, you know, good stuff. Enjoy cool. it. Um, yeah, I watched uh, Killer Elite with James Caan. Um, I thought that was uh, pretty decent. I know I talked, I said I was watching that last week. I was in the middle of it. I finished it. Um, I still haven't watched one of his this week. So I'm going to, at some point I'll watch another one. I've kind of slowed down on, on uh, watching the um, old movie every week, just because we've got so much stuff that we're watching. I started watching Shameless again, which I hadn't watched. Uh, I only watched like half the first season. I really liked it. I just fell off of it. So I'm, I'm going through it. I'm almost done with season one now. Um, Let's see. I watched Untold, the story of the made-up girlfriend from Manti Tail. Really good two-part uh, film on Netflix. Wedding really? season. I had no interest in reliving that mess. So, yeah, but it's you know worth, what? It's I think you need to watch it because for me, I remember it, him being so villainized for it. And then I didn't realize that his part of the lie was very small in comparison to what the whole story was. But no one focused on that in the media until now. Like it was very much like he was catfished. And this was before catfishing was really a known term. Mm -hmm. And that's what led to all this. And then by the time that it was all starting to come out, he just felt really embarrassed. So he didn't want to tell the truth. You know, he didn't want to embarrass himself further. So he he lied about it. But it wasn't like a, I thought it was from the beginning. It was a made up thing and it wasn't. So that was, it really opened my eyes to the whole thing. And like Rebecca says, we're watching, it's like, people are just terrible. They're just terrible people. And I'm like, yes. And this isn't even like, I'm not even throwing shade at the person that did the catfishing, which obviously was wrong. Cause they, they've lived a, a full life in that time too. So it's interesting to see that person on screen as well. Um, so I do recommend people watching that. Um, Orphan First Kill I uh, watched that just came out Friday. I really like that. It's it's different. It, so don't expect the original one. It's it's a lot more crazier and and more sleazier um, as people are calling it out for. But it, it is fun. Uh, we we watched Jurassic World so Rebecca could watch the Dominion uh, yesterday. Still entertaining. Still liked it. Uh, Wedding season, which I just mentioned. Um, that was a good rom com on Netflix. Check that out. Also Royal Teen, more of a Rom drum, if you will. Uh, it's a four and one out of uh, Norway. Um, it was a good movie, but the ending was. If they don't make another one, the ending really sucked. If they do make another one, then it'll probably be okay. But it was it had one of those endings where you're just like, wait a minute, it can't end like that. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've watched this last week. Um, I do recommend if people put off Shameless like I have. Go watch Shameless. It's really funny, great acting, uh, great performances. All right, uh, news and notes, and then we'll wrap this baby up. 
All right, news this week. Kenya Barris to write and direct Wizard of Oz reimagining at Warner Brothers. So I'm sure that'll throw a lot of people in a tizzy. One, because he's a black man, and two, because it's remaking a, a classic. So um, it'll be interesting. I can hear the, I can hear the, uh, the racist comments now. Well, they already made the Wiz. <laughs> yeah, right. Why exactly. the Wiz? So why don't we do this again? How many do they need? That's exactly what they'll be saying. Um, they're, just, they're just changing everything. <laughs> Exactly. Um, Johnny Depp will direct his first film in 25 years. He will be behind the camera for the biopic Magda Galina, Galliani. It's an Italian artist. Uh, Depp will also be producing alongside Al Pacino and his producing partner. Viola Davis joins Hunger Games prequel, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in big role. Uh, new Saw film releasing October 27, 2023. Saw 6 and 7 director Kevin Gruter will helm the new film. Warner Brothers and Paramount sell 75% of their combined stake in the CW to media conglomerate Nexstar. John Wick prequel series The Continental coming to Peacock in 2023. Shutter reality series Dragula getting a spinoff on the streaming service. The Black Phone 2 is being considered as Scott Derrickson and author Joe Hill talk about what they would look what that would look like. De Niro and uh, Barry Levinson reteaming on Wise Guys where Robert De Niro will play two roles. Goodfellas writer Nicholas Pileggi will pen the script while Rocky producer Erwin Winkler will produce the film. Ron Perlman, Nick Nolte, Charles Melton, and Tim Blake Nelson join Natasha Leon Peacock series Poker Face. You ready for this cast list, Wayne? They join an already a huge cast, which includes Adrian Brody, Audrey Corsa, Benjamin Bratt, Chloe Sevigny, Daniel McDonald, Dasha Polanco, Ellen Barkin, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Jamilo Jamil, uh, Judith Light, Lil Royal Howery, uh, a big, uh, huge star of our show, um, Niall Cunningham, Nicholas Cirillo, S. Epitha Merkelson, Simon Helberg, and Tim Meadows. That is a TV show similar to, I think, the um, Will Arnett show where he brought celebrities on to participate like in a cop show. This yeah. one, but this one's actually a cop show where they'll be playing actual characters and not uh, and not like themselves, like Marshawn Lynch played himself on that show. And it was supposed to be like, what if Marshawn Lynch was a detective? Um, and then they had to improvise everything. So th- this will be a little different. Uh, Hawk- Hawkeye and our flag means death directors, Bert and Bertie are going to direct a film based on a Disney amusement, amusement park ride called big thunder mountain railroad. Mark Wahlberg will star and produce action comedy. The family plan over at Apple films for Apple plus. R.I.P.D., the movie no one expected to get a sequel, is getting a straight-to-streaming to sequel from Universal. Obviously, Ryan Reynolds and, and Jeff Bridges will not be returning. Uh, Simone Kessel joins Yellow Jacket Season 2. Rory Culkin joins Season 6 of Black Mirror. Dan Levy joins Sex Education Season 4, his first TV role since the end of Shit's Creek. Elijah Wood, latest to join Yellow Jacket Season 2, reteaming with Melanie Linsky. Uh, Mary y- Yamamoto joins Godzilla TV series at Apple+. Plus. Video game Days Gone being adapted into movie from Oscar-nominated writer Sheldon Turner. Outlander star Sam Hugan is circling the lead role. Cobra Kai creator is working on, get this, Wayne, Ferris Bueller Day Off spinoff, which will take place at the same time as the original, and it was just announced it'll be about the two joyriding valets who take the car from Ferris uh, and and uh, uh, his girlfriend or whatever at the club when they drop the car off. I know. However, I will say this. It's from the guys that created Cobra Kai, who are the same guys that did Harold and Kumar. So I think they, we, we give them a little bit of leash on this and see where it goes. It's going to be a movie. Um, it'll be interesting to see where they take it. I think, it'll, like I said, it'll take place. It'll be a, a, a nostalgia film for sure and take place in 1986 when the original took place. Wayne, your comments. At least they're not trying to force another Matthew Broderick reprising the role as Ferris Bueller on this. I don't think that would work. And agree, I agree. Um, it's it's an interesting uh, tagline. So we'll like you know just see what the movie's going to be. So we'll definitely see um, where that goes in a, probably in a year or two. I would imagine uh, Oscar winner Ariana DeBose to star in House of Spoils from Blumhouse and Amazon Prime, an Ally McBeal sequel series in the works with black female lead. Sure, that'll get the internet a buzz as there are a bunch of racist assholes on there. Um, as as movies like Prey uh, got got bombed because a woman stars in it, 
And what was the, there was another one recently too. Uh, bodies, 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 I think got bombed because it has female leads in it. Just, it gets ridiculous to the point where just because a woman's in a movie, they're like, Oh God, I can't believe. And like, She's women going to be women. whining about her menstrual cycle the whole time. Right. It, and it's so stupid because we, they've watched women in movies for a long time, but now because it's you got to be angry about it because it you know it's a woman of color or, or a, a strong woman or maybe she's a lesbian. It's like oh my god, they're pushing their agenda on us. It's like we don't people we don't have a fucking agenda. We just want people to see themselves on screen, and that's what this stuff does. That's what putting women in these roles does. The um, fragility, just the fragility of men again. Just exactly. Like, really? It really is. It really, you know, everyone likes to say that women are so emotional. Men are fucking emotional bitches. And we need to, we need to stop letting everything bother us. Um, all right. Uh, release is coming up. End of the Road with Queen Latifah and Ludacris hits Netflix September 9th. Meet Cute with Pete Davidson and Kayleigh Kowalko hits Peacock September 25th. Lucky McKee's The Old Man releases in theaters on digital October 14th. AMC's offshoot RLJE Films is releasing it, so it'll probably be on Shutter at some point in the next six months. Um, the Greatest Beer Run Ever, starring Zach Efron, hits Apple Plus September 30th. Enola Holmes 2 releases November 4th on Netflix. A Friend of the Family limited series hits Peacock October 6th, based on the documentary Abducted in Plain Sight. Uh, we've talked about that one several times on this show, so they're actually doing a full mini series of that, uh, starring Colin Hanks as the dad. Who one of my favorite lines is, I, it's, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but the dad's like, "They just start touching my penis," and it was like, so, it was something like that, where you're just like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like, <laughs> um, such a crazy documentary. I'm glad it's getting a, a mini series. Uh, I used to be famous with Ed Screen hits Netflix September 16th. Uh, Death this week, Teddy Roy, uh, Teddy Ray, comedian, dead at 32. Robin Griggs, Another World, dead at 49. Wolfgang Peterson, director of Das Boat and plenty of other movies, a lot of them taking place in water, uh, dead at 81. Q Lazarus, singer, singer of Goodbye Horses, dead at 61 after short illness. Uh, so that's our show for this week, everybody. Um, another short one because we you know we're again we're, we're getting down to just reviewing one movie a week here so uh these are flying by a little bit i uh, hope you guys are enjoying the new shorter format um if you guys have any suggestions for us let us know uh we're willing to listen you know and have people on as guests wayne your final thoughts for this week yeah andy tjt dave anything you got to <laughs> anybody else that tunes in mom <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. You, you five, five, six, whatever. Uh, if you guys got any uh, notes, you can just text us because you have our number, so you don't have to post it online. Um, no, no, I post it online. We'll use it. We'll send it out. <laughs> we appreciate Dave Buss a lot too because he def- definitely does post almost every week that we. Uh, not that the other guys don't. A lot of them will comment when they see something they want to comment on. But Dave, we know Dave Buss listens every week, um, and we definitely greatly appreciate. Him. So, Dave, thank you for, for listening. Personal shout out to Dave Buss, everybody. Um, yeah, we again, we appreciate all the support we get from everybody. And it's just it's really fun having time to do these every week. And we hope you guys are still enjoying them. So, uh, yeah, it's been another great week. Thank you for listening to a new episode of Now Showing with Mike and Wayne. All right. And the actor. Hasta la vista, baby. Hey, everybody. We're all going to get late. Yeah!